Chapter number 4 Geared up for a corporate life Attitude What a coincidence On Rishabh's first day his first learning was an attitude Here it goes He had taken admission in AIES In other words you can say he had geared up for a corporate life All 120 students were waiting for their first lecture and the first faculty one projector was on and a question mark was there on board everybody was scratching their head and thinking what was that it's a question mark but why is it there inside that classroom 120 minds were banging their heads to find out the answer to that question then the door opened and one tall handsome lecturer came inside. He introduced himself as Mr. V. Sane and the first question he asked from students was why you guys are here? Almost everybody replied for MBA and for getting success in life. Okay so now the question is what are the basic traits you need to become successful? Someone said skill, someone said hard work, some said knowledge. He replied, hmm, means you all are thinking. Well, let me tell you, two things you need to move ahead in life is asking a question and thinking. So you should ask without hesitation, without fear that what people will say. To find out the most important thing in life, to become successful, if each letter of the alphabet has a word equal to its sequence of the alphabetical order. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. If A equals to 1, B equals to 2, then what makes your life 100%? Skills 82%. S 19, K 11, I 9, L 12, L 12, X 19. Let's do total. 9 plus 11 plus 9 plus 12 plus 12 plus 19 is equal to 82. Same way, knowledge is equal to 96%. Hard work is equal to 98%. Attitude is equal to 100%. Without attitude, your skill or knowledge or hard work has no use. So now you need to change your attitude. What a masterpiece lecture it was. Mr. V. Sane was very strict and straightforward, but a gem of heart. He taught him how to fight, fight against all odds. Rishabh's educational background was not as perfect as the course required, like graduation from economics or commerce or engineering background, well-versed English and high lifestyle. He had nothing, not even a basic knowledge of operating computers, like making PPT presentation. You can't imagine management course without PPT presentation. The first day, he took charge of making the first presentation of his batch and went to Cyber Cafe. He had given almost 20 hours there and learned how to prepare presentations. Next day, he presented his presentation and as usual failed to impress Mr. Sane. You can't be a master in one day, right? You need to practice a lot. But this attempt brought some new friends for him, Vesh and Yash. He learned a lot from his college life. When the result of first semester was out, he was the topper. Among 120 students, he was the topper. Topper not from the top, but from the bottom. Yes, from the bottom. Nobody except Vesh wanted to be part of his presentation group in any assignment. His communication skills were not good and knowledge was also very limited due to past academic background. 
He was working hard but not able to understand what to do. Another faculty, Mr. Sanyal, came in class and gave an assignment on excellence. He was a faculty for communication skill and asked him to speak. He prepared and went on podium but forgot everything and his mind was blank. Then she told him, Rishabh, you are on the podium and you are the king. Communication skill is nothing but just a way to convey your thoughts in a simple manner to your audience. And when you are on the podium, that time you command the knowledge which you need to deliver. Act like a king and control. If you don't like the mic, then don't use it. Don't like jargons, don't use them. Use simple language and connect with the audience and deliver your thoughts. It was such a confidence booster. All fear was gone and the first biggest victory was achieved. Next day, he got one assignment from Mr. Mani, presentation on EVA, economic value added. He got one partner, Venu, as a co-presenter and this presentation carried some marks which were going to be added in their final results. Rishabh started preparation but just one day before he was supposed to present his presentation, Venu ditched him. He had to present that crucial presentation alone. He went ahead and followed Miss Sanya's advice. Keep it simple and on the podium you are the king. Mr. Sane came dot on time. The entire class was waiting for Rishabh's presentation and also to see what punishment he is going to get from Mr. Sane. The first question asked from Sir was, where is your partner? He said he backed out, but I am ready for my presentation. All right, let's see. He switched on the projector, left the mic and went in between the row and started his presentation by saying, I have only three slides to present. One is dealing with the traditional definition of EVA and second slide is dealing with my interpretation and explanation. Third is the conclusion. But before going to the third slide, there will be a question answer session. You all are free to ask any question regarding the subject. He still remembers what he explained about EVA. No jargons, in plain and simple way he explained. If I invested rupees 100 and got a total income of rupees 120, so my profit is rupees 20. Now, if I further invest rupees 100, then the total income is rupees 230. Although I am profiting, but it is not as profitable as it was earlier. In simple words, I am earning rupees 2 on per rupees 10 invested. And now it is rupees 1.5 per rupees 10 invested. The traditional definition of EVA is economic value added is a measurement of company's financial performance based on the residual wealth calculated by deducting its cost of capital from its operating profit adjusted for taxes on a cash basis. Then question answer session. His presentation was over and he got called out by Mr. Sani. He asked him to meet him in his cabin. Rishabh went there and Sir said, well done, now please start devoting more time in library. And apart from Mumbai Times page 3 news, please start reading Economic Times. Next one and a half years were more adventurous for him. Apart from Ms. Sanyal and Mr. Sani, he got five more mentors. Mr. Nagpal, Mr. Rao, Mr. KK, Mr. RD and Mr. Mahulekar. Mr. Nagpal had given him assignment based on real life experiment, industry visits, insight of logistics and inventory management. 
Mr. Mahulekar trained him in SPSS, the best software for marketing and research. Mr. KK prepared him from statistics, permutation and combination for making decisions. Mr. Rao made him CRM champ. All these faculty showed enormous faith in him and he became very good at marketing and specialized in the same subject in PGDBA. In fact, he became one of the favorites of the three days of his college. Mr. Mahulekar, Mr. Rao and Mr. Sani. His presentations started getting attention and were considered the best among his batch. Earlier in the first semester, for presentation, no one wanted to be part of his group. But now, the situation was reversed. As everybody wanted to be part of his group, because of his approach and representation of his presentations as Skitwi. And he was regarded as the top scorer. He also started representing his college not only for academic inter-college competitions but also in extracurricular activities, competitions. He was considered as a hardcore marketing guy. He won prizes in inter-college competitions on marketing paper presentations, beating IIMs and got a standing ovation from his classmates. The director told him, Rishabh, you have made us proud. Once rejected, when a student hears this from the same director, it marked a notable transition in his reputation. But one day, R.D. told him a unique thing. He said, Rishabh always work on your weakness, not on strength. He asked, why sir? Everybody says always work on your strength. And you are saying just opposite? How to become unbeatable? R.D. said, Rishabh, look, management is not about one department. It is about all. You are not from IIM and this is a very competitive world. Quantity is more but the quality is less and if you work on your weaknesses, you may be able to convert your weaknesses into strength. That day you will become unbeatable as an MBA product. Rishabh said, OK sir, I will try. Now he entered the final semester. The recession had occurred and no new company was visiting the campus. The pressure was mounting. A new director had taken charge and always used to say to all his students, work hard, only then you can get a job. Once you get a job, then you earn money. And when you earn enough money, then only you will get a wife. If not, you will get nothing. New junior batch had come in college and seniors presented a skit written and directed by Rishabh. In that, he put the punchline in a slightly twisted way. He showed college life in a skit and represented tier 2 city college conditions. The punchline was, no campus recruitment, no placement, no placement, no job. No job, no money. No money, no wife. If no wife, no life, then need to jump at Vashi's Creek. This satire almost cost a job for him because the new director had not taken this punchline sportingly. But his final results saved him. His name was once again featured on top. Yes, on top. But this time, from the top, not from the bottom. His college life was at its last stage. Job searching was at its peak. Everybody was happy with his progress. And some college staff, who was happier than anyone else, were the librarian, Ameya and Parag, the computer lab instructor, Pai and support staff. Finally, they were not going to irritate by book demands and demand of opening up the computer or library early 
and keep them open late in evenings. Rishabh spent most of the free lecture time in these two places. His mentor, Mr. Rao, wanted to venture in the education industry. For his startup, he needed one team, and he had chosen Rishabh along with three of his classmates, Raj, Lippi, and Shobha. Before joining the corporate world, Rishabh's other mentor, a father figure, Mr. Nagpal, called him and his friends at his residence and said, Hey, now you and your friends are going to be part of the corporate world. So you need to take care of few things. You don't have to become workaholics. You have to become workaholic. Means having fun doing what you are going to do. Workaholic. Hmm, great. Rishabh had new buzzword for future corporate life. Push yourself. Second most important thing is that you have to push yourself to limits. And remember, the sky has no limit. You need to get a goal to push you. Get a challenge to push you. Get a deadline to push you. Push yourself with self-discipline. Get others to push you. Get competition to push you. Get ideas to push you. Get a tour mentor to push you and a mentor to support you. Success again seems to be a pushy thing. Great, Rishabh was in deep thought. What are you thinking, Rishabh? Sir asked. Nothing, sir. Just thinking about how to do all this, Rishabh replied. Okay, let's find the answer to a few questions. And the first question is, do we know ourselves? Mr. Nagpal asked, Do we know ourselves? There are few people who are living in this world that have no real sense of self-identity. Their identity and operational mindset within the world are set by outside societal influence. Thus, they are a clone of system with many other identical clones. They cannot see the world around them for themselves. Success is allergic to the people who do not possess the ability to think themselves. Nor can they do anything on their own. Rather they like being told what to do by others. Life is controlled by Their life is controlled by parents, media, friends, government, job, spouse. People allow these different entities to dictate how their life is planned, causing them to misread what actually brings value to their presence within the world. The greatest danger to a person is not knowing who they are actually when no one else is around to tell them so. What you need to do? You need to take a day or two for a long time to be yourself. Stay away from everything and everybody to only be with your own thought and with yourself. You need to do a self-analysis of yourself, identifying your strengths and weaknesses. You need to list out your dreams and identify the fears you have, which will make your dreams difficult to achieve. Now invent a plan that positions you as a leader of your own life. Living life by your own set of morals or ideals. The virtual world of success. The second question, are we living in a virtual world of success? We see people driving a Mercedes car and think the person who owns the Mercedes car is successful. What they do not see is that the individual owning that car may be in the state of panic because that car's EMI is due, the mortgage is behind and other expenses are due, which have them drowning in debt. False images blind the easily influence a person's ability to see what actually matters beyond public opinion. Without knowing the truth behind the publicized facade of many who fake success, people easily get stimulated by virtual representation. So when your eternal being is miserable, 
you are not successful. Real success produces the ability to think freely and do as you wish on your own terms. What do we need to do? We need to learn to see life beyond material wealth and reject the need for outside validation. People and things are not constant. They change and disappear as time goes on. Develop your emotional intelligence skills. This power helps to gauge people beyond what they publicly display in order to see them for who they truly are. Live below your means until you can comfortably live well. This is accomplished when money can be utilized as a resourceful tool rather than a desperate need. Confused? Hey, not a big deal. Let's start one by one. Mr. Nagpal had taken a pause and started explaining again. A. For ideas, you need to keep a diary. And when an idea and information comes your way, you just need to write it then and there. It is challenging to be a student of your own life, your own destiny, your own future. Don't trust your memory. When you listen to something important or valuable, write it down. Take the time to keep notes and maintain a journal. B. You have to carry a schedule and record all your thoughts, conversations and activities for a week. C. For any activity or conversation that is important to your success, you should have a time given to it. Schedule an appointment with yourself and create time blocks for high-priority works, conversations and actions. The program, when they will begin and end. Have a discipline to keep these appointments. D. Have plans to spend at least 50% of your time involved in the thoughts, activities and conversations that produce most of your results. E. You need to schedule time for disruptions. Plan time to draw away from what you are doing. F. You need to take the first 30 minutes of every day to plan your day. Until you complete your time plan, don't start your day. The most vital time of your day is the time you program your time. G. You have to take 5 minutes before every call and task to decide what result you want to attain. This will help you to know what success looks like before you start and it will also slow time down. Take 5 minutes after each call and activity to determine whether your desired result was achieved or not. If not, then what was missing? H. Learn how to say no. I. Always attend to your customer's call. And if you are not able to, then call him or email him whenever you get time. J. You need to block out other distractions like spending more time on social media unless you use this as a tool to generate business. K. Remember that it's difficult to get everything done. Also remember, 20% of your thoughts, conversations and activities produce 80% of your results. L. It takes the time to build a career. It takes the time to make changes. It takes the time to learn, grow, change, develop and produce. M. Learn to solve problems. Family problems, financial problems, emotional problems, business problems. N. Last but not the least, in corporate world, you need to be first person to be in the office and the last person out from the office. Sir completed this sentence, took a glass of water and again asked, Rishabh, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm thinking how lucky I am to have a mentor like you. These are small things but need to be practiced. As we have nothing to lose, if I fail, then what will I do? I can't fail. My father had put all his savings on my education. Nothing more is left. 
so I need to practice this and will do so, he replied. Life is a collection of experiences and their intensity. It is not just a passing of time. The best phrase his mentor gave him, Mr. Rishabh, if you will change, everything will change for you. Rishabh accepted the offer from his second mentor, Mr. Rao. So in recession also he got campus placement without coming companies into the campus.